And uh, first of all, uh, thank you very much for the invitation to this excellent conference. Uh, my name is uh, Olaf Elsen. I'm an emergency physician uh, working in the, in the University Hospital of uh, Stavanger in Norway. I'm also a director of a research center in our hospital. Uh, and our center has worked for the last four years in an EU project which is called Bridge, together with uh, several partners from all over Europe. Uh, the ultimate goal for this project was to increase the safety of the citizens by developing solutions that could improve the management of crisis and emergencies. Uh, here you see some pictures from those from such situations. Our vision was to facilitate the cross-border and cross-agency collaboration and also to establish a common operational picture. Um, the problem today is that uh, in the pre-hospital uh, setting, uh, in big incidents, uh, the manual workload is very high. And uh, the use of modern technology is very little. We use more or less uh, the radio as a communication, like they did back in the World War II. Uh, in the mass casualty incident, uh, uh, the, the capacity of the treatment is too less. If you have only one patient and one chain of survival, uh, we can almost do miracles. But uh, that's the opposite in a situation with mass casualties. And here we think that modern ICT can compensate for this imbalance. Here you see the paper tax in an old-fashioned triage system. But uh, what we have uh, developed in this uh, project is uh, uh, e automatic triage bracelet. We have, uh, which consists of a logistic part uh, with GPS tracking and transmitting via 4G. We have also put in a, a timestamp system, and together with the micro pa patient monitor, you see a picture of the the e triage bracelet on the right hand side. Uh, and in addition to a traditional patient monitoring, we have put into it some uh, three uh, uh, movement sensors. And we are trying to develop the movement sensors uh, like a conscious indicator based on the movements. And, and trying to correlate that to the Glasgow Coma Scale. That's a very interesting product. Here you, here you see the timestamp system. Here is the map from the dispatch center where we can see all the patients out on the scene. If we click on one of the patients, we see the details of each patient lying out on the scene. And we have also a summary of the, both the status and the location of every patient. And uh, that's give us a very effective overview over the situation online. Today's situation is uh, we have uh, difficult to establish a common operational picture. Um, but by using uh, modern ICT, uh, we think it's possible to establish a flexible decision support system for exchange of information which is very important in those situations. We have developed uh, several concept cases for doing this. Um, here is one of them. We also used the drone. Could you just start the, the little video clip? Uh, which uh, 
it's loaded with sensors and uh, sending all the data to the uh, emergency dispatch center. Uh, I have a little sum up video which shows uh, the whole system. The Bridge Project. Funded by the EU, it focuses on the development of the means and tools for an effective crisis management in case of large-scale emergencies. With a budget of over 18 million euros and a development time of four years, several countries and companies engage in a new international cooperation. In the first step, reasonable concepts and adequate scenarios for the validation of practicability and fields of application are developed. Our demonstration scenario takes place in a virtual chemical facility near Cologne. In an area of over 150,000 square meters, the Explo Chemco facility handles several chemicals, some of them highly flammable and dangerous. Therefore, stringent safety measures and continuous surveillance are necessary. In the control room, all safety and security issues of the facility are managed. At all times, at least a core crew monitors the facility to ensure safe operation and to be able to alert additionally needed staff and the authorities in case of an emergency. But now, the unthinkable happens. Due to an electrical discharge on a leaking tanker lorry, a fire is ignited. The blast waves knock over chemical towers, damaging buildings, even on the far reaches of the site, shattering windows across the industrial estate, resulting in a large number of victims, heavily injured, buried under debris, or killed. After the alarm is triggered, the authorities are notified. But until the first actions can be taken, a toxic, carcinogenic cloud already begins to spread toward a densely populated area. Right away, a weather-dependent risk assessment is created, helping prepare first responders. Warnings are distributed via the bridge broadcaster through all available media. In the emergency control room, situation awareness is enhanced by large-scale, multimodal, interactive visualizations of information displayed on the Bridge Master, consisting of a 42-inch multi-touch control table. Using that technology, the incident commander has an overview of all available resources in the Bridge Resource Manager. Furthermore, it monitors and protocols all activities carried out during the emergency to stay in control and to evaluate the incident afterwards. Also, the bridge mapper helps the incident commander identifying optimal routes for first responders to reach the incident site. Simultaneously, the bridge information aggregator collects vital information gathered via open and social networks, providing unique perspectives and more insight on the situation at hand and identifying possible sub-events. A mobile ad hoc network called Bridge Mesh is installed and established on the site, forming a stable and controlled network of communication. To ensure the best possible connection, the bridge local cloud connects isolated islands of connectivity using off-the-shelf portable wireless devices such as mobile phones. Furthermore, modern mobile phones can be used as an open wireless hotspot containing a short message instead of the standard SSID, the network name. These help beacons can then be used as the means to create a direct connection for communication. To ensure faster and more competent help for victims, uh, first responders provide victims on. with Still electronic tags, on. transmitting their vital status to the command center. The system and the robust bracelet monitoring and sending the most relevant data are called the e-triage. Uh, 
so my conclusion, and we have tested all the concept cases because uh, our center uh, had a responsibility for the end user advisory board in that uh, project. And uh, to just uh, sum up, uh, we think that we can reduce, uh, reduce today's workload in, uh, in such situation by th up to 30 percent based on our demonstration during the project, and also improve the large-scale emergency management. And I think I think I have within the time limit. So just thank you, and welcome to Norway. <laughs>